Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review of Empire Issue 1. And I really enjoyed this one. I didn't know kind of how this event was going to go. I mean, I had heard everything leading up to it of this, uh, the Kree and the Skrulls joining together, coming after the Kotati, and like, okay, I understand that. Let's kind of see what it kind of actually entails. And... This gave us an interesting setup. I'm intrigued to see where this event is going to go because it does seem like it could introduce some interesting kind of shakeups going forward. Now, timeline-wise, with the other books, mm, there's a lot of different stuff going on. We've got Tony Tony back, so Iron Man 2020 is behind in that kind of instance, and he's wearing his kind of extremis armor. I was wondering which one that they would have as an in-between till he gets his new armor in the, uh, when he gets another, when he gets relaunched in September. So, I'm always glad when that armor comes back up. But, that's the only kind of issue that, like, really kind of messes with it, but otherwise, I'm like, okay, cool. Because Avengers is dealing with something, and Fantastic Four that came out kind of with this is the only one that kind of like I had that really connected with what was going on here. So we start off and we see that the Fantastic Four have run into the whole Kree Skrull Armada and like this looks like we need to look into this and they are just coming off having gotten these children uh, Joe Van and Nkala who are two important people within the Kree and the scrawl, respectively, societies. So they're like, hey, Franklin, Val, can you kind of get them out of here? And I understand uh, Franklin and Val's whole thing of, hey, you're just wanting us to be pretty much babysitters. Of course, there is some kind of truth to that, but I mean, granted, you guys have the power, well, Franklin's got the power to kind of deal with, like, two crazy, like, Korean scrawl kids if they start going at it. Val's able to tactically strategize to that to effect, so they are pretty much the perfect babysitters in that instance. Now, Franklin, of course, brings up the whole point of like, hey, me using my powers on this kind of situation is like exactly what I'm kind of needed for. And with how the events of this issue go, it's going to be an interesting point that's going to be brought up probably later on of like, if I was there could I have changed things? So that is going to be a big issue with Franklin probably going forward. And of course, they go, uh, Invisible Woman is able to uh, turn them invisible to check out what's going on. They of course see Hulkling as the Empire dude with uh, the Emperor dude of the New Alliance. I'm like, what the hell's going on? And they see Super Skrull and all these other kind of big wigs in their respective societies. And of course, Super Skrull's like, hey, there's some invisible people around here. Let me reveal them to you. And it's like, ah, shit. We then switch over and we see that the Avengers are talking to the Kotati on the blue area of the moon. And this portion is pretty much to make sure that everybody's up to speed with everything that's going on. That long time ago, the Skrulls, being more of the technologically uh, advanced race, decided to have a contest between the Kree and the Kotati. They chose Earth's moon as the battleground, made a habitable area, gave them some resources, and said, do something. The Kree... Uh, did this whole awesome city that was empty and the Kotati did a beautiful lush garden and Of course, it's like hey, they're the winners and the career like F that noise and Went and slaughtered them. It's like oh shit So you can see why the Avengers are like, okay, this has been a persecuted kind of peoples Let's try and make sure that this shit doesn't happen again because they see that all this stuff's going on with the whole garden and all that of course, we see that... I don't know if I'm going to be saying this right. Uh, Koi? Koi? Like on Sequoia, the Celestial Messiah dude. Koi. I'm going to go with that unless somebody else is able to tell me how to pronounce it. Because like, I know it's kind of linked with Sequoia, so... Koi? It's like, hey, thank you, Avengers. We will remember this as you came into our hour of need, and you'll always have a place reserved here in our garden. And everything just feels off with them. You get this real sense of unease with how the Celestial Messiah is talking to them. It's like, what the hell? And it's pretty interesting because Tony's like, what do we call you? Oh, just a, a coil dude. Yeah. 
and we see that Jennifer is taken by like a Kotati uh, uh, controlled swordsman to go like get her some kind of weapon. It's like, okay, let's kind of see what happens with that. And Jen, of course, She-Hulk comes back with a hammer and she's not raged out. She's kind of uh, in between kind of thing. Not the complete slim kind of uh, She-Hulk that we've seen before and not quite the roided out like Rage Hulk, She-Hulk that we've seen as well. She's kind of an in-between and she even seems off with this hammer. She seems like she's got her whole Jennifer thing going but they got this they have this like image there with like this green glint for her eye and one of her eyes and it just looks fucking creepy as shit. So that's pretty much setting themselves up there. We see that the Armada arrives and of course, the Fantastic Four are with the Kree and the Scroll. Not with them, they're in the ship. I mean, they're still trying to figure everything out. Of course, Reed's able to deduce, like, um, yeah, you really wouldn't have been able to kind of, like, made all the animosity go away, so this alliance probably was done beforehand, and they pretty much came to you helping to use you as a figurehead. He's like, yep, pretty much that. And, of course... Tony's like, kid, do you realize what they're using you for? Pretty much just using you as PR and stupid shit. And the Avengers like, hey, we're going to rescue you. Don't worry. We'll get this whole situation sorted out. And of course, Hulkling is like, listen, I trust the advisors and the information that Super Scroll and the rest of these people have given me. And unfortunately, I don't have time to convince you otherwise. And I'm like, what? Even just like a blurb of like, what's going on with the Kotati and why they are such a threat. Like, hmm? Right? Maybe? Like, whenever somebody's like, I don't have time to explain, I can understand that, but uh, usually, uh, with what happens in the issue, you're like, yeah, that thing. It's like, and then you would talk to the other people and be like, is this true? Because this seems more like a delaying tactic. Because, of course, the Avengers launch off. We see, uh, of course, Robbie Reyes, Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider, the Quinjet, which is fucking awesome. The Kree and the Skrull forces start coming out. Even though the Fantastic Four tried to stop them. Didn't work. And we see that uh, Robbie is able to pen and stare all these different uh, Skrull and Kree and all that kind of stuff. Which was really kind of cool. But, of course, the Quinjet gets kind of knocked out of commission. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing for me. I don't know what Black Panther does at this point. But somehow he gets some kind of mech thing. I don't know if it was him transforming uh, the Quinjet or it was something in the Quinjet. Because I'm trying to figure out what happened to Robbie. Because I think he at least needs oxygen or the Hell uh, Charger to breathe in space. The other one's not so much. But it's still fucking pretty cool and I love his shit as he's going at it. She-Hulk, of course, is kind of working around with uh, the swordsman kind of dude doing the uh, fastball special and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah. And we switch back over and we see that Tony is working with Thor and Cap and that they are standing, of course, in the blue area. And we get this whole thing of Tony talking about how magic doesn't really affect him any much, much anymore. He just has it as a variable that he does. Like, Thor's hammer will always fly. Thor's even like, shouldn't I be up there doing some stuff? He's like, mm, I kind of need you here for a minute. Clamp something around Mjolnir. He's like, hey, let it fly. And then does. And we see this competing stuff of what's going on between Tony and Reed Richards, where Reed is commenting on Tony's faith in what he is doing and what's going on and all of his actions. Where Reed is more like the questioning side and trying to figure out what's going on. I think it's just to show the dichotomy of both because... Tony should have looked into more of the things and actually so should have read. But Thor pretty much launches it at Hulkling and Hulkling is able to stop Mjolnir with the sword and it's a pretty fucking badass shot drawing wise. It's beautiful fucking art in this book. It just works so well. Everybody just looks amazing and this shot just nails it. And Reed's talking about how it like inspired all in him. I was like just what he thinks, he's seen it all. He sees this kind of thing. And the thing is, it's funny because Tony's like, yeah, um, that could potentially happen. 
So he had that thing locked around Mjolnir and used it to jack into all their systems and boot, turn it off. I'm like, that is a real... It's good to see good old-fashioned Tony moves because I'm like, yep, Stark would totally do that and it totally worked. And everyone's like, shit, he was able to stop the hammer. He wasn't able to stop the technology thing. It's like, oh God. And of course, then it goes to the reveal that um, Koi is like, ah, thank you, Avengers. And talking about disparaging remarks to the neat things. It's like, oh, shit. And then, like, you gave us enough time to do the flowering as the Kotati are changing forms and you see a Koi doing the same thing and commenting on everything and being like, okay, now we're going to be, like, the sword of vengeance and punishment. And it's like, oh, this is not good. It sounds like they're pretty much going to try a genocidal thing to wipe out all animalist animal kind of life or meat things as it was called it's like that's not good and of course that kind of thing happens it's the cycle of violence though you have to be careful what happens when you visit violence upon some kind of people or any kind of race because it goes into the, like a bully bullying someone and that victim becoming a bully themselves and perpetuating that cycle and all of that it's like yeah, you kind of want to look into those kind of things. But of course, we see like this death blossom blooming. It's like, what the hell is that? And he's, uh, he starts to control like the plant life. And this is amplifying to the effect of like using it on like the soil, on people's boots and stuff like that. And it just starts going throughout the whole fucking Cree scroll uh, empire and shit. Uh, armada thing and like we see that people can feel people dying and everything it's like no shit Reed Richards is kind of messed up we see uh, the thing like dealing with all this kind of shit it's like oh my god and of course Tony is horrified as Steve and all that it's like I, I didn't know it's like you had no inclination and you had no intelligence of what was going on even though we had in uh, previous things to beware the trees it's like why are we be bewaring the trees that's kind of important information to know. Now, granted, they've been thinking about this. It's like, okay, is that because the uh, Kree and the Skrull have animosity and just vehemently hate the trees? Or is there something that they had that would have given them more information about this kind of reaction because they should have bewared those trees? And they see it as they say that they are going to be the Avengers now and that this is going to be the seed, uh, their Empyrean seed, and that their empire will start here on planet Earth as that is the end of the issue. It's like, well, this is going to be interesting to see how they're going to fight the Kotati. What's going to happen? Uh, will the Avengers ally with the Kree and the Skrulls? Will they have to fight the Kree and the Skrulls? Actually, like, three separate kind of factions of the Avengers trying to stop the Kotati and also trying to minimize any damage that the Kree and the Skrulls will be doing. Uh, the Kotati had to be stopped with what they are doing, but hopefully genocide can be avoided. It just opens off a lot of possibilities. I'm like, holy shit, that's a banger of a way to put out an issue and start off this event, and I can't wait to see how it goes from here. So those are my opinions on the issue. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, also like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.